Welcome to a bonus edition of Whiskey Cast, featuring cask strength conversation from the world of whiskey. I'm Mark Gillespie. This is episode number 924 for February 10th, 2022, featuring our special Sunday night edition of the Happy Hour live webcast from the other night. The gang from the Off Track with Hinch and Rossi podcast joined me for a virtual tasting session. James Hinchcliffe, Alexander Rossi, Tim Durham, and their special guest, Marco Andretti, as the whiskey and indie car worlds collided for a night. The guys are all bourbon lovers, except for Thim, who will drink just about anything, as we've found over the years with the guys. And thanks, as always, to Redbreast Endures, the presenting sponsors of Whiskey Cast, for making our live webcasts possible each week, along with the Dalmore, Mortlock, Catoctin Creek, Writer's Tears, Scarabus, and Sagamore Spirit, the segment sponsors on our weekly Whiskey Cast podcasts. No, your eyes do not deceive you. We are live. It is Sunday night as opposed to our usual Friday night happy hour live webcasts. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mark Gillespie in the Whiskey Cast studio in New Jersey, and uh, we are not the official post race show for the Bushlight Clash at the Coliseum. Nor are we the official halftime show for the Winter Olympics or next weekend's Super Bowl. But we're going to have a little bit of fun for a little while or so, tasting whiskeys with the uh, the guys from Ask Off, Tra- Off Track with Inch and Rossi. Um, guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us tonight. And uh, let's introduce everybody. First of all, on your left, James Hinchcliffe, Tim Durham, their guest, Marco Andretti, and Alexander Rossi. Guys, I know that uh, at least two of you had a really hellacious weekend last weekend in Daytona. Everybody recovered? For different reasons, yeah. Alex, uh, <laughs> Alex, I think, got more sleep even than I did. but no, I we, don't think that's true. No, well, yeah, that's true. You should have. I worked more than you did. Let's put it that way. You certainly did work more than I did. That is true. Yeah, but neither of you won. Well, well <laughs> I didn't I mean, lose. I don't think he could get beat. I don't think that's, he's okay. That's fair. Well, yeah. he could. He could get fired. Could I will. Fired. I got to give Hinch it. major props because the longest I've ever done a stand on air was six wow. hours, and to do seventeen out of twenty four is really well done. Yeah, uh, you guys. I was watching from here, and you did a great job, Hinch, along with the entire NBC crew. Thank you so much. Yeah, much better job than Alex. But yes, yeah, yeah appreciate yeah, that. That was the main takeaway. Like right, everybody I think had. so. Yeah. yeah, he didn't compliment Alex's performance. <laughs> no, so yes, thank you. Well, no, that. Alex <laughs> came in second. Alex's team came in second overall, right behind Elio. His team. <laughs> yep, sure did. <laughs> yeah, well, but I think I think the amazing part was it was an accurate one mm-hmm. too, right? Yeah. Uh, up up until last year, that was a that was a big kind of missing missing uh, tick. On, on the, the resume for the accurate DPI program and, and to be with team Penske for the period of time that they did and to always have the performance and speed and to have two IMSA championships, but never, never really like an endurance win um, to get it last year with Wayne Taylor racing was, was amazing. But then to come back and defend that this year with a one, two with Wayne Taylor and, and Meyer Shank was, was surprising honestly. Um, but it was it was an amazing thing to be a part of. We have people already joining in the uh, chat area. If you want to put a comment or a question in, feel free to go ahead and do that. If you're watching us on Twitter or on, I'm sorry, on Facebook or on YouTube, uh, we can't read Twitter comments yet and we can't read them on Twitch, but uh, we can read them otherwise. We've got to give a special shout out to Graham Frazier, who's watching from Scotland tonight, where it's one in the morning already. And I knew this was going to be late, but uh, figured we'd go ahead and do it anyway. So uh, thank you for staying up late to watch, Graham. So, Marco, tell us about uh, your last experience on the track this year. It was in uh, SRX last summer. That was fun to watch. It was fun. Yeah, I mean, it was very um, – I didn't know what to expect with the series, and I kind of kept an open mind about it and uh, ended up really enjoying myself. I didn't think I would have that much fun in a stock car, but um, – I ended up really enjoying it, and uh, you know, you might see me back this year. So I know you can't announce it. anything yet, but after winning one out of the uh, six weeks, uh, might we see you back? Hopefully. You know what's funny is like I was more proud of my heat win at Eldora on the dirt. That was awesome. Than, than, than my uh, actual feature win. So 
I'm looking forward to the dirt races. Yeah, if we end up doing that, so that'd be cool. But we're we're looking at uh, that's my plan as of now. I have been arguing on Twitter ever since last summer that SRX needs to do the dirt oval at Indy, at the Speedway, and I think that would be an absolute hoot. That's really, that's really small. Yeah, yeah, I think that might be a little too small for for those cars. But I think as small as you can go is probably Slinger, the one we ended up. Well, with. we just proved tonight in NASCAR that's if you can put twenty four stock cars on. The L.A. Coliseum. Well, there's that. Well, was that a good race? Well, <laughs> half the cars. And should just you? because I, I just woke up. Wasn't no, it wasn't. No, it was not. It was not. But put half the cars out there; it might be fun. At least Ice Cube was very bored. <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's something else altogether. Uh, Tim, I see you've decided to not join us with a bathrobe tonight. I, it was it was touch and go there. I went with vacation okay. Santa instead. It's uh, my aunt got me this shirt. I love it. Certainly, I wish he'd worn the robe. So <laughs> so we've been on vacation now with Tim. This is the the third day, and every morning he's come out with something Christmas related. Yeah. Whether it was <laughs> the red bathrobe, so pajamas, his yeah. Christmas card outfit, whether yeah. it was something that his Christmas underwear. Oh, God. Yeah, um, everyone. Was- yeah, it's just it's just really it's really great to spend so much quality time with Tim in person. Mark, the important thing to remember is that I'm delightful, um, and I just want to make sure these guys remember you, it. You got an explanation well, for this? <laughs> I mean, I'm more dressed than Alex in that picture. <laughs> Why am I the one getting crap for this? Your hair, that's yeah, that's horrendous. That's fair. General. Yeah. No, I get it. Although, well, I, Tim, I I do have props for tonight. I have the uh, the Tim Durham official flask. <laughs> I was gonna say, Mark. I feel like uh, I feel like Tim's left a, uh, a lasting impression on with sense that I noticed the samples that you sent now are <laughs> considerably smaller than in the past, which was a very wise move. More than enough for Alex Marco and I to taste. Not quite up to to Tim's level of drinking <laughs> okay. on this podcast. So I do. He would send the samples, and we did this all separate. So I would just pour the whole sample in. We didn't do it separate. You were in a different room in okay, my house. The first time we were all That's in different places. Though. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. Wish. I didn't realize. Honestly, honestly, I wish we were separate right now. I didn't realize that we weren't drinking the whole thing. So then, when I would see you guys afterwards, and I'm like, why am I the only one hammered? <laughs> I didn't get it. It's a good thing you admit on the internet. And yeah. the curling comments are already coming in about uh, Tim's stated desire that, or mythical belief that he could actually be an Olympic level curler. It'd be that hard. In three months or less, Mark. In three months or less. I mean, just look at his aesthetic. <laughs> Man, this is winter chic. <laughs> this is great. Winter chic. Got palm trees on. It. <laughs> yeah, but it's Santa. I digress. And uh, Ben McDonald wants to know if Tim has any expert analysis on the Olympic curling. Could do it in three months. I stand I, by that statement. When are you going to get him on the ice, guys? I, I want to see this. Dude, yeah. honestly, there's some ice outside. <laughs> we don't have any curling rocks, though. Mm. Tim would fall through. <laughs> well, you ready to taste some whiskeys? Okay, so yeah, sample right. number one. And I did not tell you guys what these were beforehand, but there's a theme to the first three of these, or at least there's something that connects the three of them. And I'll leave it to you because Alex always asks why I picked what I did. So I'm telling you that there's a connection between the three of them, first of all. So, yes. So the first one is from Heaven's Door. It is the Heaven's Door Red Breast Master Blenders Edition Bourbon. So it's uh, Heaven's Door Bourbon finished in Red Breast Irish Whiskey Casks. All right. I've got a... Uh, it's not wine, got, bro. Got, you don't have to, like... I have an ice cream in mine. It. It's fine. <laughs> don't hate me. Drink it how you like it. How you like it. Cheers. Oh, that's spicy. So you can taste the Irish whiskey finish in it for sure. I think. Yeah, that's got a, that's actually got a better flavor than I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah, the bourbon still dominates, but you can taste a little bit of the uh, Irish pot still in there. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. I wish I can describe it. I just know I like it. So, <laughs> so Mark, can you can you explain something to me? So Kentucky bourbon, right, has to be a new white right. French oak barrels, correct? American. Everybody knows that. So, 
just yeah. it's French oak. Or just just Amer- it says technically oak barrel, so it can be French oak. It could be American oak. Yeah. There's that's the myth. That's a misconception that people think that it has to be American oak, but the law just says oak. New charred oak casks. Understood. So then, Irish whiskey is there the same kind no. of rules and regulation for it? No. So it, it, it's a free for all. It could be finished in something that's. It could be. Old. It could be. They can do things in uh, different types of woods. They can primarily do oak, but they can finish in different kinds of woods. You don't finish. You don't try to mature in other types of woods because they're too porous, and the whiskey will leak out. Sure. Because the wood just uh, won't hold liquids really well, but oak, white oak, does, which is why it's the most commonly used wood for whiskey. So then, the the flavor of Irish whiskey is coming from the age of the wood, not necessarily the, the difference. Oh, it's coming from the difference Correct. in the barley that goes into it, because pot still whiskey from Ireland is made with a combination of malted and unmalted barley. So you tend to get more baking spices. You get. Uh, it tends the unmalted barley tends to be a little spicier, so that's where you get the spices right. out of that. Uh, the wood they're using essentially yeah. they're using old bourbon barrels for most of the whiskey that they're producing, and a combination of whisk of ex bourbon and sherry casks primarily. Got it. right on. No, that's very good. I like it. Very, very good. Awesome. Yeah. Very good. You definitely get that spice. Yeah. Smells like a almost like scotchy on the nose. Are though. you against chasers? This is Klaus Haller. This is one yeah. of Alex. Of and course. I's sponsors. Oh, oh, oh this is bad. <laughs> From John Wojnar, Hinch right. has half an ice cube. So did the Clash. <laughs> <laughs> that I mean. Yeah, pretty funny. Yeah, wow. I mean, it's yeah. and somebody, yeah, somebody weird. going by the name of the late great Dick Trickle. Why are there two Marco Andrettis? <laughs> oh man, was it? He was the one that would smoke in the car. I don't dress like this. No, no, come on. This is, no, you don't have that much. Well, yeah. Gary Pettenhausen was the one with the famous uh, fuel line out of the helmet to a cigarette while sitting in the car. Yeah. Let's go to number two. This is one I have to give you guys credit for. Because last year when you were on the show, you told me about Redwood Empire. And I had not, I was not familiar with them until you guys mentioned it. So I sought them out and learned more about it. And we did a podcast with them last fall. And uh, I picked their Lost Monarch blend. Yeah, I was going to say which one. Okay. Which okay. is uh, a blend of straight whiskeys. It's some of their distillate stuff that they've gotten from uh, Kentucky and Indiana, I believe. Um, I suspect it's mostly Indiana, but it's their blend of whiskeys from what and what they're doing with some of their young distillate as well. So this is one I got to thank you guys for because I would not have heard about them otherwise. Yeah. Is it an MPP? No, it's they don't specifically. You might no, it's some of their distillate, some of their younger whiskey mixed with MGP. It's a blend. Okay. Yep. And is this what you found when you're out in California? With no, this Evan? one I actually found uh, in Ontario, but okay. it's a California, California establishment creation. Creation. Yeah. Um, but again, it's it's kind of coming from this world of of not blended blended whiskey was sort of you know taboo for yeah, a minute, right? For and sure. obviously, it's it's become a lot more prevalent and. Uh, Ran into this one. Um, I forget exactly which one it was from Redwood that I tried, but I uh, was really impressed. I mean, it was a mix of several different ones, different years from different yeah. places, and uh, and really enjoyed it. So glad, yeah. glad you found it as well, and yeah. glad you're enjoying it. Do you know who else mixes whiskeys a lot? Canadians. It's true. They do. Yeah. Like Drake's Whiskey? Which yeah. is MGP. Uh, yeah, Drake's Whiskey is, is MGP. All right. And go. then who's the hockey Wayne player? Wayne Gretzky? Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky who's, is, who's the hockey player? MGP. MGP is like a, uh, it's like a conglomerate of. Yeah, they just they they they, just, they, 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 stick, they produce and store a lot of whiskey, okay. and then other yeah distilleries can buy, from them, buy it from them at different yeah, ages. Right. They're sort of like the Dallara of uh, whiskeys. <laughs> <Understood. laughs> yeah. Manufactured. Nicely Thank you. put. Uh, the yeah the race. 
Chicago themselves. Again, oh. Mark, this is this is very well. This good. is one. Like I said, I Get give you guys up. the credit for teaching me about this one because I was not aware of these guys until you put me put them on my radar. So thank you for doing this. Have you figured out the uh, the theme I'm talking about here right now yet? Is it no. spice? You're overthinking it then. It's, I don't know how to describe this. It's so no, good. it's there's it's between, like, between the whiskeys, it's not uh, the taste of the whiskeys. Okay, it's collaboration. The first one was a blend between oh, yeah. Red Breast and Heaven's Door. This is a blend between California and Indiana bourbons. And our next one is another collaboration between George Dickel in Tennessee and Leopold Brothers in Denver. Their collaboration rye, where they took some of their rye whiskeys and okay. blended them together. The Dickel rye comes out of a unique uh, three-chamber still that uh, you would have to have an IndyCar engineering degree to be able to figure it out how it works. I can't, I've looked at the diagrams, and I still can't figure it out. <laughs> No, so Dalton could explain it to us. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, our resident engineer. Yes. Yeah, this the the redwood the redwood is good. It's it's got a little bit of that it's almost almost kind of a scotchy flavor to it. <laughs> so let me get my glass of that one. I'm curious. Go, go ahead and share me. Tell me what you think of this one. Yeah, it's great. Well, definitely. There's a lot of other Dickel products that we enjoy. I'm just okay. We're not. Nobody's addressing how ridiculous of a name that is. No, it's okay. a name. Just well, Tim's okay. a pretty ridiculous name. You don't hear us criticizing you. First of all, yes, I do. You criticize me about everything. Actually, pretty regularly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Second of all, Dickel is much more of a silly name than Tim. Only an English. So okay, Mark, re repeat. What is this? A combination of and, and Leopold Dickel? Brothers Rye in Denver. Todd Leopold and his brother own a distillery in Denver. They make their rye whiskey using this uh, unique three chamber still design. Does the three chamber still design equal no. scotch? No, you're thinking triple <laughs> distilled or double distilled. No, no, no. I'm scotch. just tasting it. I taste scotch. I taste a lot of scotch. It it takes a lot of the uh, it takes a lot of the spice out, but you've got the uh, spiciness from the dickel that's mixed in there. But uh, basically, it works sort of like a column still, except that it's going through. Three different. The spirit goes through three different stages as it's being distilled. Right. Like I, right. I'm so take that over, Josh. <laughs> I mean, Aiden, but, Aiden right. Tapler right. has got an interesting one here. Yeah. Suggestion, Marco, that uh, you should do a barrel aged whiskey with uh, Andretti wine casks from your grandfather's vineyard. You should. Yeah, that's actually. I mean, I'm in. Uh, yeah. He's not a he's not a big bourbon guy, but we can. We can, need to be. we can float yeah. the idea. Yeah. 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 All we need to do is get our hands on a couple, uh, couple of barrels from them. Yeah. Everybody, uh, everybody has their faults, you know. <laughs> Mark has, yeah. We have a question for you from <laughs> Kevin DeVries, Hinch. He wants to know what your go-to Canadian product is when you're in the Big Smoke or the Muskokas. And Kevin's in Ontario, so. <laughs> uh, well, I mean... What the hell? Look at Kevin's profile picture. Yes, that's exactly what that. everybody should I actually be. love that. I like that. Uh, <laughs> Kevin, thank you for your profile picture as much as your question. I mean, normally, if uh, if we're up in Muskoka, we're, we're probably drinking something a little lighter than this. Usually, we're on some kind of local craft beer of some kind. But I've also had, I've also had really good luck uh, tracking down Weller in Ontario. Um, they get about, it seems like they get two shipments a year and James gets one I, of them. I, I, <laughs> I get on the, uh, the LCBO, which is, you know, the, the controlling board of liquor in Ontario for uh, their app. And it tells you kind of what's available in which stores. And I know roughly what time of year it comes in. So once a week in those times <laughs> a year, I'll jump on and see if there's any in stock and then send out friends and family to hit all the LCBOs to, uh, to stock us up for the next six months. And so, the cottage up there has got a, a nice little uh, a nice little bunker full of of Weller uh, Special Reserve and uh, an antique 107 for the colder nights when we're up nice. there in the winter. And yes. just like adding, like where exactly is this cabin and where is it stored? <laughs> <laughs> nice try, Tim. 
Donner Pass Whiskey has a comment. They want to know if they're at your house, Alex, Andrew. They said you both live in the same town, and those pie trees out the window look like my house. We're well, not far from Oddly the enough, Pass. That's, yeah. a, that's a very good observation. Um, we are at Tim's aunt and uncle's home um, that they were kind of nice to let us use, kind of to, to come and have a ski weekend. But, yes, I grew up about 25 minutes from here. So very close to, to home, very close to Donner Pass, and beautiful trees and nature and weather and everything. So we're really happy. We have a challenge from Doctor Who with a bunch of numbers. Say Dick Trickle drinks Dickle three times fast. (laughs) You know, Tim, Tim was saying to me how much he wanted to say that name. Go ahead, Tim. Go ahead. I should have done this before we drank. Dick, no, can't even do it once. (laughs) Dick Trickle drinks Dickle three times fast. Dick Trickle drinks Dickle drink. Nope. nope. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, Doctor Who, that is quite the tongue twister. You have yes, as, as Dick Trickle himself points out, the weirdest tongue twister he's ever seen. <sighs> and Dick says he is disappointed in you, Tim. Aren't Join the club, yeah. Mr. Trickle. Welcome to our club. Join the club. Any other thoughts on this collaboration between Dickel and Leopold Brothers? I don't like it. Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting that it's kind of got more of that peaty flavor. Yeah. And it's, it's, it is sort of leaning. I feel like we're almost, the three we've had have kind of gone that direction. I, I taste a little more of the peat in the second mm. one. It's so good. Is peaty scotchy? Yeah. 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 It's I mean, the last one I have to sort of, I have to back him up on that. Which is the first time Mark will back me on anything. <laughs> so you know it must be true. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the fourth whiskey is not a collaboration. And since we're asking that question about what James has Canadian style, we have picked a Crown Royal. And oh, since okay. this is, I don't know, if, are they still sponsoring you this year, Alex? Or do you know yet? They probably dropped them. I, well, it was you and I that had oh, them. Shoot. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. We it, usually Crown Royal um, support of it, supported us for the month of May because at the Speedway they had um, their Wall of Heroes for Memorial Day weekend and, and everything that Crown Royal does to support our troops. Um, whether or not they're coming back this year is to be determined, but they've been a great partner and love their product. So, well, this is the year. Canadian Whiskey of the Year, as honored in the Canadian Whiskey Awards a couple of weeks ago, the Crown Royal Noble Collection Winter Wheat Edition. And this is done from fifty-one uh, percent wheat. Yeah, yeah, we love big wheat, wheat big wheat guys. Uh, it's crazy that the Gretzky didn't win that. I know you why. I think he could pull some strings. That is, that is really, really good. good. Very wow. good. Man, Mark, I mean, you could have sent a big sample on number four, but <laughs> <laughs> he's got a rad dress. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, well, we might be able to arrange something along those lines because uh, I want you to get you guys to talk about the uh, Indianapolis Bourbon Society for a minute. You're a bourbon club. I mean, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, James, take it away. Oh, good. Um, well, uh, we formed Man, IBS. Uh, how long ago now? Three, four years? Four years. Yeah. Four years ago. And it was a, a group of us in Indianapolis who uh, some of us were kind of experienced bourbon drinkers. Some of us were bourbon novices. And me, you were well, not involved. Wait, no, I was, I was no, I'm saying be, okay. oh, some were professional. Right. Some yes. were me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> If they, if you guys had let him in, and then I was gonna be furious. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, no, he's a founding member. No, he, he'll he'll be in. Don't worry. <laughs> so uh, we started off with again, and, and Alex and I we kind of ourselves. We were kind of the neophytes in the group, and um, we did a a monthly gathering in Indianapolis, where the members would all bring a a bottle of bourbon in a brown bag covered, and we would do a blind tasting. And it was sort of a, a way for us, uh, us all to expand our horizons a little bit, try, you know, a bunch of different stuff in a, in a all, short period All the of bottles time. were under 50 bucks. Yeah, it, yeah, it started as, you know, bottles had to be under $50. And then that's changed. Well, well, once we got through a certain amount, you only have so many options, right? So then you'd start doing themed ones. So whether it was, you know, a Canadian whiskey or we would do um, from a, a specific distillery, you know, it had to be a Buffalo Trace product or something like that. And we kind of start mixing it up a little bit more. 
so it's been a it's been a fun uh, yeah it's been a fun experience the last sort of four years getting together and one of the one of the, the rules of it was we would have a different person host every month and the host got to keep all the bottles at the end of the night and so we all sort of got to expand our collections a little bit early on <laughs> which was nice we've now kind of grown out of that and uh, we now we do enough collecting on our own that we don't really need those right ones, so we so. Just basically just bring bottles that we want to share with everyone and and have pizza and watch a game or a fight or whatever and and yeah, have evening, so. it's been a it's been it's a, really cool. a very educational process for yeah. us. Yeah, you 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 certainly learn. I think it's it's kind of like traveling the world. You know, everything gets much smaller because you learn what you like, and then the majority of things you don't like ultimately, right? right. And then you can narrow it down to three to five products that you know that you're kind of looking for and you want to drink. And I have a question: What is it about Buffalo Trace for me? Like, what do I like about that? And everything, yeah. No, I mean, we're the yes, same. Yeah, yeah, but in every everything they have. Well, like, what's what's all my like? Favorite. What's so cool about them is like the mash bill for Buffalo Trace, for Blanton's, for Eagle Rare. A lot of their products is all actually the exact same recipe. It's just aged different, different barrels and, and longer different, or time different different times. Different same time barrels, different places in the rickup. Yeah, so different temperature. Yeah, well, can yeah. be yeah. Um, but we're with you. I mean, if you had to put a gun to our head and say one one distillery. That's it. Um, everything about every one comes of out of well, Weller comes out of there. Different, different recipe. Than I would name my dog me. after Weller. <laughs> <laughs> he makes that joke because I did, in fact, name my dog Weller. And well, Tim <laughs> named his dog after <laughs> Pappy too, right? Yeah, sure, he did. sure did. No, absolutely. I absolutely didn't. He you sure did, okay. dude. I love Pappy so much. Pappy's his name beautiful... is Teddy. That's his middle name. He goes by his middle Tedward name. Edward Scissorhands on his birth certificate. Tedrin James. Happy or Tedwardo Saverin, the founder of Facebook. We have a comment from Jamie Carr. If Crown is a sponsor, you need a helmet bag like the bottle bag. Can they make one of these big enough? Or a fire suit in Crown Royal Purple? Great idea. Good idea. I'm gonna I'm gonna call Bell Helmets. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new partnership for me this year, and see what they can do. It's a bad time. I'm 26 years in. You're, well, you're welcome. Yeah. So there's uh, actually it was actually it's actually a mechanic that works at Andretti Autosport who I've known for, I mean, 15 years, probably big, big crown Royal drinker. And he collected enough of the, the purple bags to get a, like Jack, like a blazer made out of the bags. <laughs> who is this? Awesome. So it was Casey. The guy, Casey. Oh, I know Casey. Yeah. So Casey has, yeah, like I said, big fan. It's like big my, fan of food. Big, yeah, and it's that's kind of it's kind of thing I would expect you to do. Almost, I feel like we should borrow that jacket for the next time we're on this podcast. Well, yeah. I actually met a guy several years ago in Cornwall, Ontario, at the uh, Wonderful World of Whiskey show, who had the entire suit made out of Crown Royal. There you go, there you go. Yeah, that and those pants would feel great. That's a it's a beautiful <laughs> material they use there. But. <laughs> And Doctor Who is saying, imagine if the Indianapolis Bourbon Society and the Irritable Bowel Syndrome folks had conferences at the same hotel in India at the same time. I can tell you whose would be more fun. <laughs> <laughs> can you? I don't know. That was a, that was a guy's party. Jason uh, Hatfield has a question for you, Hinch. What's your favorite behind bourbon behind the bar at Root and Bone? It's uh, his favorite restaurant in town, by the way. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for that. And uh, yeah, we, uh, I've, I've, I've tried to, uh, to lean on the guys at Rune Bone to make sure we have a, a good whiskey collection behind the bar there. Again, for me, it's still, you know, anything that comes out of BT is what I'm going to default to when I'm there. So uh, I sometimes, you know, I, I actually have them keep a bottle or two behind the bar underneath stashed away for me and certain people. When oh, really? Come. You've never told so me Jason, about that? Jason, yeah, you, yeah, you're welcome to that one. Uh, just say James said it's okay. Interesting, James. Uh, they they won't even charge you. Say it's on James's. Yeah, I mean the bottle is paid for already. So, <laughs> well. tell us about Root and Bone. That's the restaurant that you're involved with in, in Indianapolis, right? Correct. Yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a fun little project. You know, we we opened in January 2020. Not project. the best time to uh, to start a restaurant. Process. Uh, we're, we're killing it for about two months and then obviously COVID hit and shut everything down, but incredible credit to, uh, to all the staff there and, and the, the community that kind of in Indianapolis around us, um, we switched to, to carry out like everybody else, uh, and the, and the restaurant's doing very well. It's, um, kind of gourmet, uh, Southern comfort food, um, chef, Jeff and Janine Booth, uh, were both on MasterChef. 
they have restaurants in Manhattan, down in Miami and South Beach. And uh, this was a, a concept and a, and a menu that they created. And it's been it's been a lot of fun to be a part of. And it's been a blast and people seem to enjoy it. So, yeah, it's kind of a kind of a fun little thing. And Mark, James just made $300 for talking about yeah, it. Yeah, I was going to say, Mark, if, <laughs> if you want to let James know where to send the check. Yeah. I'm still waiting for the supplements from last year. <laughs> Charge it to them. No, they know why. No, they, they never know why. <laughs> I have to pay because it doesn't exist. Shows, and Jason yeah. says he's going to ask for that under the bar bottle. And uh, Dick Trickle wants to know, have we been keeping track of Thim's intake? Yes, we have. He hasn't had any more than anybody else has, right? Oh, so Mark literally just admit, admitted that he reduced our sample sizes because of these. No, those were the only <laughs> bottles they had because we cleaned out a bunch of glass and sent it to recycling. No, no, so, okay. Okay, because every honestly, so here's the thing. So we had we had our first uh, event in Nashville, the car event in Nashville, amazing experience. Yeah, great, great time. Um, a, a lot of fun for everyone there. And, and Off Track had a live podcast on um, what's the Broadway? Broadway. Oh, Broadway. Is that? Broadway, but like it's called Honky Tonk in the Honky Tonk. And um, you know, those are all bars. And so James and I were there, and obviously we were racing and competing. So we were drinking our Diet Cokes and water, and, and people were sending Tim a shots. lot of shots. A and, lot of and shots. And Tim, you know, has has no self control as we've kind Correct. of already established. And, yeah. and by the end of it, um, you know, he's supposed to be our host slash producer slash kind of manager Damn. of this show, and, <laughs> and he didn't he didn't contribute anything. If if anything, well, it was a detriment. It was, was a detriment some, to the show. Some yeah. gurgling sounds. I, think. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it's just this isn't the first time that someone's had to you know cut him off like, on a live <laughs> podcast. Nah, yes. yeah. we wouldn't cut Tim off. It's more fun when he's drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's true, actually. That's I mean, true. So where have you guys, uh, what distilleries did you guys hit since we last talked? None, I mean, because we haven't. James is, you well, know. no, just honestly, with, with, with COVID, you know, uh, we, we had a couple that we were planning on being involved in to get another barrel for the foundation that, uh, that we work with. Uh, but at the time, they were kind of doing, this is, I mean, this is a little bit selfish, they were for any kind of barrel selects, they were sending you samples to have at home. And then you would say which barrel you'd like, whatever, whatever. We really love the experience of going. So we were kind of holding out until, uh, until we had the opportunity to go back and uh, we're actually, yeah, we've got, we've got a couple that we're trying to line up for this summer, but nothing confirmed yet. So hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get back down there and do that again. Do you have any recommendations? I think I would love to go to Woodford just because not necessarily their pro I mean, the product is, what it is right um but just the the property you know and you've got mm. the horses and you have everything that relates to that and the property that i really want to see is uh the journeyman distillery in michigan um do they have horses i don't know if they have horses well then it's not as good but i i i enjoy their product <laughs> i really enjoy i really yeah, but, enjoy their but, but like um, are there it's beautiful it's beautiful alex is, Maybe there, is, there, there, is, there, is there an equestrian experience there's unicorns so no, there's not. You don't know that. Fun no, thing about the uh, the Journeyman Distillery is it's the old building it's in used to be both at one time or another a corset factory and a buggy whip factory. So there you go. they what were holding a party it? every year oh, called the Whips and Corsets Party just because they could. All right. Fair so, enough. so Mark, we just point out, Marco and I have never been to a distillery. So if we had to go to one for our first one, which one should we hit? Up? Well, the only Buffalo. one James and I are not at at that period <laughs> of time. I know you guys don't like Marco, but we don't have to talk. Well, about I think things. if Marco right. likes Buffalo Trace that much, then you should go there first. That's you should that's pick the lot. distillery that's that's the, the whiskeys you like the most. You should go visit that one because it's going to have more of an emotional attachment. Okay. Mark, what's one of your favorite on the trail? Oh boy, I am really impressed with Jep the Creed just outside of Louisville on uh, I-64 in Shelbyville. There's a bunch of new yeah, ones that have opened up new visitors' experiences. Uh, Four Roses just opened a brand new visitor's center that I have not seen yet. Uh, same with Heaven Hill in Bardstown. There's three or four that have opened up. Uh, then Jim Beam just opened its new American Still House. Just off of I-65, they upgraded. They were down for 10 months last year while they upgraded the whole thing, so I've not been there yet. So. It's something I really can't say. 
the one I want to go back to that I'm thinking I'm going to be going to next month, I think, is uh, Castle and Key, which is just down the road from Woodford. It's the uh, old old Taylor Distillery. Oh, no, I that they've that restored. Is. That uh, basically they took uh, a few C one thirty tanker flights full of Roundup in there and killed all the vegetation and then rebuilt the distillery. Wow, that's one way to do it. Well, because literally <laughs> it had been closed since the nineteen seventies and it was all overgrown. It was literally. I was there ten years right. ago and it was a jungle around the place. So why did you go ten years ago? Just, Just to, to see, see the, the site because it was an old abandoned distillery. Oh, cool! Hmm. And it was it just just to see the beauty of the thing because it's there's beauty and decay in a lot of ways. Um, if you look at it uh, as a photographer, that's w- what I wanted to go see. But uh, they've. Well, I'm sorry. Hey, <laughs> right, that's a little harsh. That's... <laughs> oh wow! Well, because when they closed it, they basically left everything the way it was. When they shut it down, they didn't take anything out. So you have the. Uh, the old mill wheels and the old rusted equipment and things like that. And uh, the windows are not even boarded up, things like that. So it was just kind of interesting to see. Yeah, that'd be a cool experience. That's sort of like when we go to, uh, to mid Ohio, they, uh, not the old boys prison. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not too far from the racetrack is where Mansfield. Yeah. The, the prison where they shot Shawshank Redemption. And, you know, it functions as a kind of tourist attraction. It's not abandoned in the same way, but, you walk through it, and it's it looks looks like it's been falling pretty good. We're disappear. getting some recommendations also um, for visits. A wilderness Trail would be a really good one to go to, according to Aiden, and uh, they make some very good whiskey too. Uh, the guys that own Wilderness Trail are actually fermentation scientists who uh, consult for other distilleries, and they decided to open their own just to test some of their own ideas out. So they make some cool stuff. Cool. And uh, Aiden also suggests that definitely you should go to Buffalo Trace, Marco. I love they that. They also <laughs> No, that's on my list. And they have a haunted trail, a haunted tour they do in the evenings. Oh, yeah, I know cool. that. I know that. Have you been there? Buffalo Trace? I've been to Buffalo Trace. I've not been to a haunted tour. That'd be fun. That'd be really Probably fun. fall. No. They're all all year long? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I'm not done. I have a ton of family in Kentucky. I don't know why I've never like gone and done the trip. I don't want to bring you to a place that serves alcohol. Mm. <laughs> you can barred from us. So, <laughs> no, my, my family likes me. I'm like, you asshole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, any favorites among the four whiskeys yeah. we tasted, guys? Number, number four for me. Yeah, the weed is two for I me. I think I like number one. Almost two. Shoot. Red One Empire. Yeah, yeah, I like two. Red One Empire. One and two. I'm a sucker for weeded. So I was, I, I'm very, I mean, four, but I loved one. I thought one was fantastic. Yeah, yeah I think one, one was great. my favorite. Well, we're going to let you get back to relaxing and enjoying your vacation time because we get back to what, two or three weeks from today or two weeks from today do we start up with IndyCar? Uh, three. Three yeah, weeks three. from today is St. Pete? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very excited to get the season started. Alex, more than anyone, probably. Yeah. No, 100%. Full, full time. <laughs> and Hinch, you're going to be in the broadcast booth all season long for NBC, and we can't wait to see this. This is going to be fun. Yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to it. Cool. You know, obviously, it's uh, it's an incredible group of people that uh, that worked out that, that program for, uh, for IndyCar, and Lee and Townsend and myself up in the booth. It's going to be a lot of fun. We got a little bit of a preview of it in Daytona, obviously, with the, uh, the IMSA guys as well, and uh, yeah, very excited for the season. Yeah, with St. Pete coming up, you got another 17 hours to do. Oh my god, it is the <laughs> longest race that's not in deep for some reason. I don't mm-hmm. know why that race always feels like it takes forever for well, the car, but Nashville beat it. Well, yeah, we had a couple stoppages there because we were all driving. Well, there was, no, there was like one or two green flag laps, I think so. Yeah, I one or two. Yeah. Well, this is out of the ordinary for us. Uh, we had somebody asking, Who are these guys? and well, these are whiskey lovers just like the rest of us, just like all of us. Uh, <laughs> Because we normally interview distillers and stuff, and I'm going, no, this is one chance where we get to have fun and just talk about a little about racing and a lot about whiskey. So, uh, guys, thank you for doing this and taking time out of your vacation to uh, join us tonight. Uh, Stay safe. Don't fall off the skis. Be careful out there, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Thanks, guys.
That's our bonus Happy Hour Live webcast from last Sunday night with Alexander Rossi, James Hinchcliffe, Marco Andretti, and Tim Durham. You can listen to Off Track with Hinch and Rossi wherever you get your podcasts. Don't forget to join us Fridays at 5 p.m. New York time for our weekly Happy Hour Live webcast on the WhiskeyCast YouTube channel, our Facebook page, Twitter, and Twitch. This week, my guest is Maker's Mark Chairman Emeritus, Bill Samuels, Jr. As always, we appreciate the support of our presenting sponsors, Doers and Redbreast, along with Writer's Tears, Scarabus, Sagamore Spirit, Mortlock, Catoctin Creek, and the Delmore, our segment sponsors on each week's flagship Whiskey Cast podcast. If you have comments or anything else you'd like to share with whiskey lovers all over the world, we'd love to hear from you. Look for us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at WhiskeyCast, or just email us. The address is comments at whiskeycast.com. WhiskeyCast is a production of Cask Strength Media, copyright 2022, and comes to you from the charming, yet regrettably dry town of Haddonfield, New Jersey. I'm Mark Gillespie, reminding you that when you drink, please drink responsibly. Thanks for listening.